Greetings, mobile accomplishers. Welcome to the Verge Mobile Show. It is July 23rd, 2013. It's episode 55. I am Dieter Bone. I'm Vlad Savo. And I'm Chris Stigler. And Dan Seifert thinks it's okay to take a vacation. I, I don't know. You know, we built Dan uh, to look like a human, but he is a robot. I didn't expect robots to require vacations. Uh, but here we are. Yeah. Deeply, deeply disappointed. Especially because, like, okay, I'm sorry. It's July. It is, we've just finished up, like, mid-July. And I'm looking at our, like, topic list of potential things that we could talk about that happened over the past seven days. And it's stupid. There is so much crap that happened. Yeah. What is going on? It's a little cray-cray. I feel like some companies kind of picked up on the fact that there was going to be a lull and then decided to make news. Yeah. And it's like, it's I just don't even know. I don't even know. Well, um, let's just dive right in. I mean, it's, it's a Bible-long list, so we might as well just get right into it. All right. Well, so obviously the, the big stuff today, this very day that we are recording this and live broadcasting in your face, uh, is the droids. The I love droid. you, Ultra Mini and Max, uh, not Razors anymore, which and Vlad is is legally prevented from having an opinion on these devices because we <laughs> found out that they are they are indeed unlike the Razor series. These are true Verizon exclusives. They will not be sold elsewhere. Yeah. that is that is actually a question I had in my mind. I was doing push-ups today, and I was like, Are they going to do these as milestones in Europe? Because that's what used to happen with droids. They used to be called milestones in Europe. What does was, what, what like, do push-ups have to do with that sentence? <laughs> I was well, I was I, counting hundred dollar bills today. And I was thinking about how... I, I thought I thought it would give our listeners slash viewers a little bit of context. And the other thing is it kind of frustrated me and I did a few extra. Oh my god. Just like I don't think this is gonna happen as a milestone. Particularly okay. Let, let's let's bring it back to the context and the important bit, which is the Max, which is yeah. the one device that impresses me about this. And I, I just figure a milestone Max is something European people would be interested in. And the headline item is that 48-hour battery life. Mm-hmm. Right. Which, you know, for an Android smartphone with a big old, big old screen is impressive. And when I, I would normally be really skeptical about that figure, but frankly, the, uh, the last Max delivered. On yeah. what was it? Uh, Thirty-six hours. They they rate that at. So when yeah. Motorola says forty-eight hours for this one, I tend to believe them, or at least I'm a little less skeptical than I'd normally be. So both the Max and the Ultra are five-inch screens. They're some kind of AMOLED. Motorola claims it's not pentile, and that's fine. But it's something weird. If we look at the macro shot that we've got up. It's not the most beautiful thing ever. They're seven twenty p, right? That's right. Apparently, yeah. At 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 five inches, so that's not like the most beautiful screen ever. But I guess that contributes to believing in battery life. But the thing I wanted to get to, um, is just straight off the bat, uh, we've got the Ultra and the Max, and like the significant difference between them is you know battery life, and mm -hmm. that is there is there a storage difference? I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm not sure if there is, but the rest of the specs are identical. Right, and so you get a like. It's $100 more for a huge battery, and it's a millimeter thicker. And just as with the Razer HD and the Razer HD Max, or maybe it was Max HD, I forget because it was stupid. Um, the question is, like, why HD do you Max. think... HD Max. Why are there two? Why not just... So I, I think I, I mean, think I there know, are but... I think there are two compelling reasons for Motorola to have done this. One is the the same reason that they did it the last time, which is that Verizon said, "Hey, we want a 199 tier and a 299 tier device. Make it happen." Yeah, um, it's an it's a it's an awesome upsell for them, right? Right, right. But two, um, they they get Motorola kind of gets to take two worlds, access titles uh, by making two devices. They, they have World's <laughs> Thinnest with the Ultra, and then World's Craziest Battery Life with the um, with the Max. And it is, um, I, if I'm not mistaken, the largest battery they've done is a 3,500 milliamp hour in the Max, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. But um, World's Thinnest what with the Ultra? World's Thinnest Droid? It's World's Thinnest, certainly the World's Thinnest 
<laughs> I was going to say the world's thinnest full phone sold in the U.S., but that doesn't really make any sense. It, let's put it this way. It's a very, very thin <laughs> No, phone. it makes perfect sense. It's exactly like the World Series and the NBA World Champions. <laughs> hey, it is the NBA World Champions because there's a team in Canada. Uh, yeah. You, okay. you think about that. And, and, and yeah, baseball, The Max too. does have um, 32 gigs of storage, while the Ultra has 16. Hmm. So there's so, a difference, too. But go. the phones, um, you know, the, the outlines... So I had the opportunity to hold all three of these today. And um, the Max, I have to say, I was struck by how heavy... It, like, there's a really significant difference in weight between the Ultra and Max. Yeah. Um, but the, the thickness is a complete non-issue. And what I was telling the Motorola reps there, and I strongly believe this, and I mentioned it on the podcast before, is that if, if, if OEMs like Motorola had just ceased to make phones thinner than about eight or eight and a half millimeters and just kept them that and kept making the batteries better and better and better, then we I think that consumers and, and OEMs in general would be in a much better place because they wouldn't have an expectation of these ridiculously stupid thin phones. They would yeah. just know that with each new generation of device, they're getting a longer lasting phone because none, none of the phones on the market right now except the Maxes and uh, Galaxy Notes, I guess, really last long enough. Um, so the the uh, the max uh, in in terms of dimensions is like totally fine, totally cool. Does feel a little he- like it, it, I was struck by how heavy it was, and I think a lot of users will notice that the first time they pick it up too. But they'll also get used to it really quickly. So in the long term, it's going to be a non-issue. And then the mini is is whatever. I I I can't. Well, the mini I, I is feel a, so four point three inch screen. Yeah, yeah. and, and I feel twenty p. And if it's it has decent battery life and like the same processor, we got to get into that processor in a bit. Well, but like, here's the problem. Really, like a legit phone, and we we got to compare it to the HTC One Mini. Like, I I've got no problems with the Mini. No, the here's the cool. problem with the Mini. The, right. the the problem with the Mini is that, and, and to be fair, I only saw it in black. I really like the Razer M in white. I think it's a it's a really sharp looking phone in white. Um, and the Mini is designed to replace the Razer M. The problem with the Mini is that. Uh, it does appear, I didn't have an, a Razer M there to compare, but I'm almost certain that it's thicker than the Razer M, and the reason Whoa. for that is that it has um, wireless charging built in. The Razer M does not, um, and that, that adds something like a millimeter. Well, don't so the it, Max and the Ultra have wireless charging too, do they not? The, the Max the does, the Ultra doesn't. Right, the, uh, the, Ultra, the Ultra can have it added with a, uh, with a cover, an aftermarket cover, uh, right. Just like the the Lumia 925, which is the dumbest idea ever, but um, yeah, the, the, so the, the the mini ends up coming across looking kind of pudgy because it's it's thicker, and I I wish I I had them in front of me right now, but if I'm not mistaken, the mini is actually thicker than the Ultra. Okay. It, which well, is just, that, it just that looks weird. Be the case. Yeah, so, and it just looks. The Ultra's weird. whole set, setting point is the thinness, but yeah. I mean. You know, what stuck out to me with this whole branding exercise is you're calling the one device that's kind of in the middle your Ultra. Like, <laughs> it's Ultra, but it doesn't have wireless charging. It's Ultra, but it doesn't last as long as the big guy. You know, it's just... Give it some... I mean, you're already calling it a droid, okay? That's one piece of branding. Why do you have to add an extra piece of overdone branding? And I have to say... Uh, I, I have this habit of citing random people from Twitter who come up with smart things that I can, and I'm just going to carry on with it. Um, and Sebastian DeWitt, who, uh, who's the designer behind Double Twist, I think, the Android app, music app. Yeah. You guys with me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, he tweeted asking, why do Android phone manufacturers insist on naming uh, their devices like Trojan condom brands? <laughs> well, so you, you raise a good point, like Vlad. And Max one thing, Ultra Mini. Well, one thing that was really... No, I mean, it's always been the case with Droid that Verizon is making it very clear that this is like an ultra-masculine, like testosterone-driven brand. Uh, and and they, they just drove that point home again today with this ad, this this sort of pre-roll thing that they showed before they rolled out the phones today, where the, the ad said, Droid is about power over pretty. And that really stuck with me, that line, because I'm thinking, why can't a phone... Like, every OEM's goal with every device they produce should be to make a phone that is both powerful and pretty. You should not be choosing between the two. It's just a a really bizarre thing for them to say. 
and, and I think that that kind of bears itself out with these phones. Like the the Ma the uh, the Max is certainly not. I wouldn't call it a beautiful phone. It's a very functional looking phone, and the matte Kevlar in back kind of has a cool look to it. And you can actually feel the weave. It's real Kevlar. Um, so. Are we still okay with it being 720p at 5 inches? Nilai is tweeting about this no. right now. I am. I'm being irritated that Motorola is shipping a $300 phone in 2013 that has roughly a GS3 caliber display. But the GS3 display was amazing. Like, I, I still what? don't... I still don't... It was. It was a great display. I still don't understand the obsession with 1080p. It, it's, a, it's a number. It, no, it's, 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 it's not about the res, Chris. Uh, I think Nilai's concern is about the quality and about the AMOLED. And it's it's one that I share, and I I, I have to say, yeah. although I'm is... I'm behind the active update display thing, so if AMOLED gives yeah. me that, that's yeah. something I'm willing nah. to take a flyer. Yeah, on. yeah, nah, I, I I can live without it to be honest. I mean, the best displays, as far as I'm concerned, are the ones that HTC is using and the ones that Apple is using the iPhone. Like those they're, guys, they're... those IPS hey. displays are. No, no debate with you, Vlad. Those are definitely better looking displays. Absolutely no debate. And um, but, but, then, even... but then you know these phones for me are a non-starter in that situation because as far as my comparisons go, it's a case of display is like one of the top things. So it's it's sure. a really quick way for me to filter out devices. You know, people who ask me what device should I get, I'm not going to tell them get this thing with an AMOLED display on it, which might just completely drive you nuts. Which we've, yeah. which you heard from Neil. I mean, he. He might be a bit more obsessive about these things than us, than the rest of us. But you know, when he's had clashes with Motorola AMOLED displays, they've just been rage fests over the quality and the color temperature and all of these, you know, little flaws of AMOLED. Yeah, you're right. I mean, when you walk into a, a carrier store and you see these side by side with uh, with an iPhone 5 or um, or a One, you were definitely not going to be blown away by the display. No question about it. Right, so one question that I did have was, is the Droid Mini, and, and this, this question comes out of ignorance, by the way, uh, and you, you guys can enlighten me, is the Droid Mini essentially some sort of a prelude to what the Moto X is going to be? I mean, we expected it to be a smaller device. The X I don't is, know that it's going to be... I think the X is going to end up being a little bigger than this. Right. Yeah. Well, it does. The X. The, we did see a profile leak of the Moto X a while ago that had like a slant. I mean, it's not perfectly flat on the back. It, is a little yeah, it's bit. got a bit of a curve going on. Um, I mean, this was the thing. Like, like Chris, was, Chris had this reaction to the event. I had the exact same reaction, and I went to go send an email saying, "Hey, somebody should write it," but Chris beat me to it. Uh, so then I did his bidding. <laughs> um, like the thing that blew me away about this Droid event were, was two things. One, like it was like what, like 15 minutes? They just like, yeah. hey, yeah, it was it's, it's, it's yeah. like quarter two, and we're getting started, and by like four after it was done. Yeah. You're starting at a random time, not on the hour, and then like you just blast through it, and then you're done. And the majority of things that you announced, software-wise, uh, were all things that we've seen leaked, like completely and totally for the Moto X. The uh, active update thing, where the screen lights up. The uh, what else? Always listening. Doing? The always listening stuff. The uh, the turn it over, flick it to get the camera. Um, the camera interface. Um, and so, like, all the stuff are like, oh, hey, Moto X looks interesting. It's got all this stuff. Uh, Software-wise, like, it's all on the droids. Uh, so, like, Moto X, if it wants to stand apart from these droids, uh, at least on Verizon, it's going to be available on every carrier, um, or at least other carriers. Uh, it needs something else to differentiate. And if it's just, like, go to Motorola's website and choose your color, then sorry, nah. yeah, yeah, but but you can be you know you can be a bit more patriotic over there in the U.S. with Moto X. <laughs> That's true. That but is so true. this is this is the other point I made is like patriotism is nice, but you know what's nicer than patriotism? Getting a phone that you want in a store when you walk in there that day. Yeah. Well, so I mean, you don't you don't think they'll stock like like a quote unquote like stock color or set of yeah, colors? Yeah, they might. But so this is this is the other thing. Verizon now has four Motorola phones to choose from, all running basically the same version of Android, um, all slightly different from each other and not very easy for the average person to differentiate between. And then on top of that, they've got the Galaxy S4. And then on top of that, they're going to have, if they ever 
bother releasing it, the HTC One. So that's six uh, flagship, basically Android phones. Yeah. You know, walk into a Verizon store. Like, what are they? Are they gonna? Are they gonna try and walk you through all six of those phones? No. The rep is gonna point you to the phone that gets him a commission. And that's gonna be a Droid. And if you are willing to push back on whatever the rep is pushing on you, then you're gonna throw up your hands and buy an iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's sad but true. So the the real question for me with the Moto X, uh, in addition to what else is is coming that makes it interesting on top of what we've already seen on these droids, is can Motorola manage to sell it outside of Verizon? Because the Atrix, the Milestone, I mean, whatever, um, hasn't gotten a whole lot of love and affection. My guess is that Motorola, if it had its druthers, probably would not have revealed these droids before the X. Um, yeah. And I, I, there was probably either some contractual obligation or a very, very hard push by Verizon, which frankly has treated Motorola very well, and Motorola, Motorola will be the first to tell you that over the past few years. Um, but think about it. I mean, Dieter, to your point, like we, basically we got... I'm guessing anywhere between 80 and 99 percent of the the Moto X story in these droids today. Yeah. And that, well, that you know. So what what the other percent is going to be? I mean, I didn't address this because I don't know what the price is going to be, but I suspect that the Moto X is going to be cheap. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the Droid Mini is super cheap too. Um, but I suspect it'll be cheap. Like I'm I'm thinking like Nexus 4 style pricing. Um, and I don't know. It knows when your car is moving. Well, I was thinking about that. Uh, I was thinking about the lower pricing. Um, but but then I, I do wonder how Google was able to pull that off. I mean, the Nexus 4 is a pretty unbelievably priced device relative to the competition. It's just so much cheaper. And it's like, is Google itself just taking a loss on these devices, subsidizing their cost? Is that how it's being yeah. done? Okay, so so I guess uh, as a way to extend the strategy, you, you can anticipate the same with the Moto X. I just don't know that it's going to be a particularly great long-term strategy. But actually, to bring us back to Verizon, I was just mulling that point you were making, Dieter, about just having a massive stack of Android devices. This is the first time the company has done it. If you guys remember, we had the HD Resound, the Galaxy Nexus, and I think one other might have been a Droid flagship Android device. It was like... Uh, uh, holiday season 2011 or something like that. Uh, I believe so. And and that was pretty much the exact same situation. It was a case of, you want an Android flagship? Here's a whole bunch on Verizon. Right. I, I still don't understand how the economics of this works out. Like you guys are saying, what's ultimately going to happen is people are either going to push the droids uh, or whatever else to get in the highest commission on, or, you know, uh, the consumer is just going to say, you know, I just want an iPhone. Put these Android phones away. Yeah. And it's going to be one or the other. I'm just going to use that as a segue to talk about iPhone sales. Can we do that? Well, no, but, absolutely uh, not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, we got way more to do here. Um, so Android Police has put up a bunch of screenshots of uh, Moto X's features. Active display, we've seen. Uh, lost phone tracking, finally. But this is Motorola handling it. By, by the um, way, we, we should talk specifically about the the, uh, the smart display. The fact um, that... Oh, okay. Because it doesn't work the way I was hoping it would work. Um, on, on the classic Nokia uh, Symbian AMOLED phones, the way it worked was you just always had like a very thin outline of a time on the display, and they could get away with that because you're, you're lighting up literally like a few dozen pixels. Um, the way these phones work, at least the uh, the, the Ultra and the Max, um, every it's like a it's like 15 seconds or something. It briefly pulses on the screen and then goes away, and the screen goes blank again uh, for, until the next 15 second pulse. With the Mini, you lift up the phone and it lights up. Um, and the the Moto up there couldn't clarify for me whether you could enable that mode on the Ultra and Max. But I would just rather have those pixels lit up. 24/7 and take the the very slight battery hit, then yeah. have to wait 15, you know, stare at the phone for 15 seconds and wait for it to pulse. Yeah. Oh, that's so American. No, or like I would rather have it do. <laughs> I would like, rather just waste energy. If it, I would just, I would if it, they could be off, but if I could just go, hey, if it, it, it's got a chip that is sitting there waiting to listen to me 
say, yeah. okay, Google Now, all the time. I just want to train it to, like, listen for hey. So anytime it's jostled or I'm like, hey, it will pop up the thing. That would be cool. Well, the always listening That's thing is, is ridiculously impressive, and I still don't understand from a power drain perspective how, how they're doing it exactly uh, because it really does work, and it works consistently. And I saw, I saw it be demoed probably half a dozen or a dozen times today. And, it, in fact, he accidentally triggered it on several occasions because he was saying, like, oh, you just say, hey, Google now, and it'll start, <laughs> and then his phone starts. Um, but it's, it's just super natural and super easy to use, and I, I just don't understand, you know, the, as far as I know, there isn't a second, like, ultra-low power mic like we've been speculating, but they are using a custom SOC for these yeah. devices, right, which, which is, is what insane. I want to to. Yeah, so hang on. So it's a custom SOC, but isn't it basically just a standard uh, Qualcomm processor with a bunch of other chips sort of, like, tacked onto the same board? Like, what exactly? Not exa- well, it's, it's based here? on Qualcomm parts, so it's using mm-hmm. standard... Adreno GPU, standard uh, create CPU, okay. uh, and then combining them, like you're saying, with some other specific purpose uh, processors. To Chris's point, I, I, I do believe that whatever battery efficiency voodoo is going on probably is down to this processor and the extra chips inside it. That so seems to be the, the likely is- scenario. Locally. A- and this chip is also kind of being uh, mooted for the Moto X, which again is going to make sense because that same feature is going to right. be in Moto X. That's what yeah. I anticipate. Um, I just want to... Uh, well, first of all, screw you guys for rejecting my I- iPhone sales. Can't do it now either. We're not, we're not done. 31.2 million in the last <laughs> no, quarter. Don't care. don't care. Second of all, <laughs> I do want to complain about calling this an 8X and an 8-core processor because... Yes. It's it's eight core in a really woolly woolly way. It's yeah. it's exactly the same thing that uh, I believe Motorola was trying to pull. And I remember, yeah, it was Motorola when they were saying our phones have two gigahertz of power, and it was actually like a dual core one gigahertz processor. Mm. I don't know. It was like a year and a half ago, two years ago, and it's the same kind of stupid trick. And it's it's not cool. Uh, it would be it would be like calling Tegra three a five core processor, right? No, no, T- that that would be like calling Tegra. Okay, well, Tegra Four is the most familiar one. But the Tegra that has twelve GPU cores and four processing cores and a right. fifth companion core, it would be like calling that a seventeen core processor. Mm. So, are these other other little processors for contextual awareness and voice awareness? Or are we, can we call these companion cores? Does 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 David have some more friends here? <laughs> I mean, we can't. But I, I'm sure can. there's an aspect of that. I have no yeah. doubt that that when the display is off, uh, all of the the crates are turned off, and there's some like ultra low, or I mean, maybe the low power core is still a crate, but it's running at some ridiculously low uh, clock speed. Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, as long as we're I, the other thing I want to talk about because we got the Droid Mini is it's not the only Mini that was announced this past week. We also had the HTC Mini, and then there's a Galaxy S4 Mini, which whatever. Um, but what's crazy to me is, like, I'm expecting both of these phones are going to be 99 bucks, And they're really good, and they're solid, like, 4.3-inch size devices. And so, wh- 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 what's, what's that? What you got? No, it's my face, but there's a thing next to my face. Wow. wow. The one so mini. the white one looks terrible. The white no, HTC one Wait, the HTC terrible. One Mini? Yeah, the, the the black one looks way better. The black one looks like murder. The white one is <laughs> looks kind of cheap. Did you say the black one looks like murder? Yes, I did. <laughs> All right, then. Um, uh, I, I think you got that from the Verizon now. marketing. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, that's a, that's a very droid-friendly uh, <laughs> uh, way to put it. Well, no, okay. like, let's, let's talk about this, this one mini, because it seems yes. really intriguing. Well, I'm reviewing it at the moment. I, I obviously disagree with Dieter. I don't, I don't think that the white one looks rubbish. It, lo- it looks good. And actually, everyone has noticed the fact that it's got more of a glossy plastic around the sides of it. Um, yeah. it's, it essentially maintains the exact same construction as the HC1, just shrinks it to a 4.3-inch form factor, keeps the boom sound stereo speakers, uh, keeps the fundamentals... Um, Everyone who's watched my hands-on video with his phone has laughed when the HCPR guy said... Best line ever. 
no compromises, and I said, apart from the ones we just mentioned, because there are quite a few compromises, but, but, okay, AC's premise is we've kept the important things the same, right? So we took down the size, we took down the price, we kept the physical construction, we kept uh, the software, which, you know, they think it's important, I don't, but whatever <laughs> sense. Um, and, you know, they've kept the camera for the most part, it doesn't have the optical film stabilization. Um, no, the, the camera I, isn't the same, is it? No, it's the same ultra pixel camera, it just doesn't have optical image stabilization. Oh, right. Which, quite right. frankly, you know, the original ultra pixel camera wasn't all that hot, so it's like poor camera versus poor camera without OAS, it's like, nah, it's a wash, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. But the point is, the user experience so far, uh, I mean, for the, I can't find a performance, a speed advantage for the original one. It, I'm sure it has a higher performance ceiling. Yeah, you, know, you, yeah. You, you can do more things and more things into the future. But today, using the HC1, HC1 Mini side-by-side, side, it's like it's the same interface, it's the same user experience. And, I mean, the ergonomics of this thing are so much better than the one. So much better than the one. It, it makes the one feel brick-like. Um, and the other thing is, and this might be damning with praise, I guess, but it's not going to be faint praise. On, a, on an occasion today, I felt like I was using the iPhone while I was using the One Mini. Oh. Which, you know, is is good news for it. It doesn't look like... There's another thing that people have mentioned is when they've looked at pictures side-by-side side with the One, it doesn't look that much smaller because it's still quite tall because of boom sound speakers, both of them mounted on the front. But in the hand, the difference in weight is significant. Um, the sides feel a little bit softer. So, yes, the plastic is glossier and there's more of it, but it makes for softer sides. And it just feels really good. I mean, it's, it's like there's not much bad to say about it. I mean, it's not a perfect phone. It's not an awesome phone. The camera could be so much better. But relative to the one, it's like I don't see any reason to use the bigger one. It's interesting to me that HTC is taking this phone seriously, and Samsung obviously did not take the GS4 Mini seriously. You know, well, absolutely. They just like they they you know wave they they did they pulled a Samsung and and put <laughs> put 250 engineers in in a room for like three days and they crapped out the GS4 Mini. Yeah. And and they're like, okay, we'll we'll sell this in like a few random markets. Whereas with HTC, this is going to be a global launch, just like the one was. And it, and I'm wondering between this and phones like uh, the Droid Mini and the slightly so, uh, smaller than standard these days One X, I wonder if we're either seeing kind of a reversal of the bigger is better trend, or at the very least, if we're seeing um, support for a second tier that's still a flagship yeah. device but is genuinely smaller. Yeah, I think it's a ladder, uh, and I will say that um, I. W- there's still compromises at these smaller phones, and they're all called mini. And I'm like, just come on, don't doesn't have to be called mini. It's not really <laughs> that mini anyway. It's still got a 4.3 inch screen. Yeah, put any of these phones up against a, a Nexus One and tell me that it's a mini. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> no, I I totally agree, and I was thinking the same thing. We're still gonna have these five to six inch behemoths where people are just you know go throw spec sheets at one another and see. Uh, which fanboy grouping wins the day. Um, but, yes, uh, I do feel like there's a, this crop of devices where our persistent whinging and bitching and moaning is being heated, and we're getting this 4.3-inch, 4.5-inch uh, kind of range of devices. Yeah. Which is a totally good thing. It is. It is. I mean, in in the U.S., success of that range is still ultimately contingent on how carriers and carrier reps choose to sell it. Uh, right. But we'll see. So, yeah, I guess the only other sort of Android stuff um, we have to talk about is, the, well, tomorrow, as we're recording this, Google's having an event. Sundar Pichai has invited us to breakfast. That is so cute. What, what is he serving you guys? <laughs> I yeah, I don't know. It's you think it's like? With him and I'll bet you it's like free. I'll bet you it's like friends. It's gonna be like free range chicken sausage, um, and like it'll be like eggs. It'll be like scrambled eggs, but it'll it'll be from like brown eggs, which by the way are like See, identical to white eggs. I don't know, man. It it like Sundar doesn't the you know like he was strong enough to take over for Andy Rubin, and he's leading mm. both Android 
and Chrome, it could be like there are some wild boars in a pen over there. Here <laughs> is a sharpened steak. Go get it. You're on your own. Or he'll, like, he'll, he'll, crack, on? <laughs> he'll crack four raw eggs into a blender, blend it, and then drink it raw, and then slam it down and start the presentation. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wait, Chris, did you mean brown show eggs versus white show eggs? Yeah, they're the same thing. I'm, I'm not sure they are. They, they absolutely are. I mean, there, there's no organic difference between those eggs, I guarantee it, other than the, uh, the color of the, uh, the shells. All right, I'm, I'm going to trust you in your Wikipedia knowledge. Mm-hmm. You know, please do. Um, Although, wh- one, one point of completely irrelevant trivia is that uh, eating egg yolks raw is perfectly fine for you, but uh, egg whites are not so good for you. Um, the, so, they're called the albumin, by the way. But how can you avoid the white? Like, because the, well, what, the white... what you can do... What you can do, this, this is how I do it, is uh, you can cook your eggs, I believe the technical term is sunny side up, um, and just keep the egg yolk runny while cooking the white. Because hmm. the white kind of cooks quicker than the yolk. Interesting. So that, that's how you can kind of balance those things so out. This is a good tip for, uh, for Sundar tomorrow at his, uh, at his breakfast. Yeah, w- w- wouldn't it be awesome if he had like a massive chef's hat? and was... Yeah. <laughs> I want him <laughs> cooking no, gator breakfast. Up. <laughs> it's just flipping things like pancakes. In fact, I pancakes. In fact, I bet there are no announcements. He's, he's just yeah. gonna bring you in. <laughs> no breakfast. Nobody else was invited. All those other invites for lies. It's just me and Sundar sitting down. He's whisking his eggs. Yep. And then yeah. he sends you on your way. No. Uh, so we're we're expecting what? We're expecting Android 4.3 probably finally. Yeah. And that's been healthily. Leaked, I suppose, um, but not doesn't there doesn't seem to be much there there, like the camera mm. interface that we already had on uh, the Google Play edition phones. Right. Um, they're finally like using a regular dial pad to like look people up. Bluetooth Low Energy, of course, which is like the one thing everybody's been talking about the stupid update since before Google I/O. That's all we knew, um, and. Um, Something about advanced visual effects and OpenGL, so there might be some like gaming stuff to it. Yeah. And we've actually been waiting for gaming stuff since Google I/O because they announced the service to sync stuff there, so they might talk about that. Um, presumably, they're going to talk about Chrome too. Um, but I mean, I mean, 4.3. If if they call this thing ice or not ice cream sandwich, if they call this thing key lime pie. Um, like I'm going to buy a key lime pie on the way to the event. And like I will, I will throw it. Well, why? Why does that make you so mad? Because it's it's a, it's a non-update. There's oh no, yeah, well that's true. Well, here that's interesting. Right. So I I think what here's my theory. I think that 4.3 is taking way longer than expected to iron all the bugs out of it. And what's going to end up happening is it's going to bump up. I, I think that 5.0 is going to come very very soon after 4.3, because I, I think they're kind of like. They're, they're probably trying to track 5.0 for a fall launch in conjunction with the Nexus 4 replacement. Right. And meanwhile, you have 4.3 creeping and creeping and creeping. So I think it's going to be a very, very quick transition. I mean, why bother with 4.3 then? Yeah, it's true. Not to, like, whatever. Um, although, so now what's going to happen is 4.3 is going to come out. Everybody's going to be wondering, when's 4.3 going to hit my phone? When's 4.3 going to hit my phone? It's not going to hit the Google Play editions fast enough. and Everybody's going to be kvetching about that. And, mm-hmm. like, we'll have just gotten over that angst or just, like, come to terms with what what is and isn't getting updated. And the answer is going to be mostly isn't when 5.0 comes out. And then we're going to do it all over again. We're going to see a ton of manufacturers. We're going to see Samsung and HTC go, oh, you know, 4.3, yeah, we want to do it. We'll let you know, and then it's going to be months of that. And then it'll be like, no, actually, we're going to wait for 5.0 once that comes out. I wish I could say that you're wrong, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm trying to think of, again, the sunny side of this, but there isn't one, really. Dita just broke it down. Really well and really miserably. So yeah, yeah the uh, the upshot is Google should never release an operating system update for Android again because it's just too much pain for everybody. Well, the upshot, frankly, is that Google should have been releasing 5.0 already. Yeah. Like I, I mean, one of the things is everybody seems to be getting really strategic about things, and everyone is just angling to make the biggest uh, splash, biggest news release around September, October time. So they're going to holidays 
with a nice bit of momentum, nice bit of interest, yada, 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 try and match those iPhone sales. You get 31 million in a quarter. It's nuts, man. I mean, we, particularly here in Europe, you know, our team takes pride in covering Nokia's uh, financial results really closely. And with, with with Nokia breaking its Lumia records, and it's still in single million figures, you know. Yeah. Whereas the iPhone is just like cranking away like 30 million per quarter. It's nuts. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't like this whole let's. Let's make it happen for the holiday season. Like, I really think if you're going to compete, you should just go out and do your utmost and innovate. And that's the thing that Android hasn't done in just way too long for me nowadays. And I'm sure 5.0 is probably going to be like a massive stock of all-around improvements. And that's going to be one of those updates that we're really going to be dogging the companies with good reason. Uh, like Chris and yourself were saying, Dieter, I don't know that 4.3 is going to be one of those updates that we need to be anxious to get. 5.0 will surely be that kind of thing. It's just if Google wants to really assert itself, make sure Windows Phone doesn't um, you know, impinge on its markets, uh, make sure it catches up with the iPhone, etc., it should be releasing like around now. Like now is the time. Because all of these devices that we're seeing being introduced and launched are going to be so much more compelling with a brand new OS to go with them. Right. So, I mean, that assumes that, well, it assumes the truth, that if they release 5.0 in, say, October, there's no way that any of these phones are going to have it for the holiday. Yeah, probably. Yeah, well, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. The, the thing well, is... Really, we're just... Man, let's be Android, about something. It, the, the, the core Android platform in my mind, doesn't have a list of like things that it desperately needs the same way iOS always does and probably always will. And, that Windows, there, Phone. The, and, and Windows Phone. Like, the, there are a few things you can talk about Android, right? There's, there's always performance. Right? That's always an issue. And I, I always hear complaints from non-Gmail users that the email well, client is terrible. The, the, there's also design consistency in lots and lots of different places. And in, in the core OS, or do you mean in apps? In both. Um, I mean, the core yeah. also like the home screen and like whatever, but like apps look different. And there's 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 a bunch of consistency and cleanup stuff uh, still. Um, and uh, there's apps. I mean, the apps just are like not as good as they are on iOS. And we we talk about this like every other week. So right. right. But let me let me let me just give Google credit for the new Gmail and Android app because it's new to me. I understand it's been out since like May and rolling out and things like that. Um, but that gradual rollout finally got to me, I think, last week. Wow, and, that's super late. Well, the other thing is that I've been using an iPhone for a long while. So, right. so, so Gmail and Android is kind of, might, have, might have just kind of passed me by in the first round. I really like it. Like, as far as I'm concerned, like I sometimes pick up my phone now, now instead of opening up a browser window to look at my Gmail. Just... Be, just because of the little previews of people's faces. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I tell and you the profiles and things uh, like that. Is our esteemed leader Joshua Tobolsky. I don't think he's a fan, uh, but I think it's fine. I like. Well, it. he doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh, um, snap. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, and and you can you can select things. Um, you can you can select multiple emails by clicking a person's name. Uh, well, not not a person's name, but a person's profile picture, uh, which is a really rapid way to. Uh, do that, and you can delete emails. I don't archive; I just delete the crappy ones by swiping, and it works really quickly. And one of the most frustrating things with the Gmail app on iOS is that you always need to have a connection to like send email and pull down your emails yeah, and things yeah. like that. Whereas all these things are done in the background, and it's just so much nicer on Android. It's the one app, and, and you know, myself being such an extensive Gmail user, it, it makes such a massive difference. So the other thing we're expecting uh, from Google is the Nexus 7, which is a 7-inch tablet, and it's going to have a 1920 by 1200 display, according to Best Buy. Um, so... I just want to see Johnny Shi come out and introduce it. <laughs> <laughs> they're staying, I mean, to Google's credit, in the small tablet space, at least in some respects, they're staying one step ahead of Apple. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd still take... And the I mean, price I, I would is going take, up though, right? It's going up to two twenty nine, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's still very reasonable if it if it is a, a you know a Retina yeah. class display. So, I'll buy one. 
probably. I mean, I would buy one if there were apps, but I've got an iPad Mini, and like taking an iPad Mini and comparing it to this, like, sorry, man, Android tablet apps. Like, the reason the Nexus Seven worked from the beginning and everybody liked it was like, this feels like a big ass phone, and big ass yeah. phone apps don't look that bad on it. Yeah. But you know what? I, I, I'm tired of it. Like, they have had it long enough to solve this problem, and they have not. Yeah. So. If they can show me that they have got a plan to get third-party apps for Android tablets viable, and they've got a plan to like actually not be a blip on the iPad's market share radar and tablet usage, then I'm excited because like it's cheap, the hardware looks good, and it plays well with the Google ecosystem. Those are all super awesome things. Well, uh, it's funny you mention that because the leaks we've seen of this thing have the Nexus logo uh, in a landscape orientation, which is a vi sending a very different message than the message Google sent with uh, the original Nexus 7, which, to your point... Was What's the message that, that that sends? It's a giant... Well, before the message was, this is a giant phone, and, and phone apps don't look terrible on it. Now the message seems to be, this is a tablet, use it like a tablet. Hold it sideways, um, assholes. Right. 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 Even though it's the same size. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's got but, a camera on the back now, too. So. Speaking of big-ass yeah. phones, th this segue is not going to get rejected. I'm switching this over to Nokia. We should uh, talk about iPhone now. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and I can't believe it's still today, but, yeah, this morning, uh, I played around with the Lumia 625, oh, which yeah. is quite literally a big-ass phone. Uh, and this is... Oh, it's got a smaller screen than the Droid Ultra. That doesn't make it non-big ass. Okay. <laughs> it, it's, it's big and it's chunky and it's round. It, it, it qualifies for the category, I would say. Uh, and it's, it's Nokia's biggest display to date, whether Lumia or any other device. Um, and it has LTE and it's targeted at a 200 pound, 220 euro oh, price point. Dude, it's WVGA. It's WVGA. Yeah, exactly. Get the, get dude, why are, you spoiling, why are you spoiling my. <laughs> Thing. I I'm sorry, I was just reading. I, I was just reading. I'm sorry, Blood. Go ahead. I was reading your post. <laughs> but you, you just burst the bubble that I was going to burst myself. Just like man. the 625 burst your bubble in your hopes that Nokia could make a big screen phone. That was awesome. I mean, I, I didn't have that hope, to be, to be frank. Not I mean, well, this yeah. thing leaked out before it was announced, but it, it was like, what if. It, it was kind of like our anticipation about breakfast with Sundar tomorrow. Like, we're dreaming about him cooking up some eggs for us and having a homely atmosphere. We're no in reality, I'm like going to throw him in the boar pit with a sharpened steak. So. Yeah, in reality... <laughs> Actually, no, it'll, be, it'll be a Swiss Army knife and a stick, and I'll have to sharpen it myself while being attacked <laughs> by boars. I guarantee you there'll be pastries there. I'm so fed up with events and pastries, man. <laughs> like, people have no respect for low-carb diets. Like, if you're a vegetarian... Uh, it's fine, but if you have something slightly different, they treat you kind of like a, like your religion is a Jedi or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, look up Jedi that. Go away, man. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Wait, where the hell was I? go to a press event and they have like a special meal line. Yeah. Instead of like writing in halal, I'm going to write in Jedi just to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's tomorrow, dude. Just, and you know, Google might actually respect that. Google is one of those companies that might actually be like, yeah, we know what you're after. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was, it, it was like just blind optimism, thinking, okay, there's this WVGA 4.7 inch device, which is essentially going to be Nokia's Titan 3. Let's hope it doesn't happen. Let's hope somehow Nokia doesn't do this thing. And, and Nokia went and did it. And the whole premise is it's a big phone, big screen, it has LTE, and it's going to be cheap. Fine, it's what, coming out I, in September. Well, I so think like also, if you're at 4.7, 480 by 800, and it's Windows Phone, maybe you don't need high resolution because they're just big squares anyway, so more pixels isn't going to make it look any sharper because they're just big squares. Well, except in, like, the browser and stuff, right? Or fonts. Or, pictures, or anything else you might really want to actually do with the phone. So Nokia kind of didn't do themselves any favors with this one because I think, Vlad, correct me if I'm wrong, I think kind of their teaser going into this was that they were going to do something big, and which obviously everyone's speculation is, oh my god, they're finally going to do the tablet, and it ends up being this thing. Nah, well, again, that, that kind of speculation comes from people who are 
you have more optimism than information, really. <laughs> like Gene Monster. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, did, did Apple announce the TV plans? Did Gene Monster find a way to ask about Apple TVs without asking directly about it? It was a, something, something subtle about like the new product categories give you... Or like diversifying into larger screens? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. And well, whatever. I, I, just want, I just want to wrap up about the Lumia 625 because it makes right. me sad. It isn't just the low resolution. It's also this LCD has rubbish contrast, so the blacks are black, they're great, yeah. and rubbish viewing angles, which to me is just like, I look at it and I just want to throw it in the trash, which is a shame because they also spend time on the design. The design is really nice and intricate, and they have this white layer of plastic, rear cover is replaceable, and have orange, yellow, and green with with a white layer of plastic layer of plastic under translucent orange, yellow, or green, which makes it look sophisticated. It's bright. I mean, this is the thing that kills me. Like the physical design guys went and did a really good job. It sounds Vlad. It sounds to me like it's kind of the same situation as it was with the uh, 520, which is also a really cute and like well designed phone with an mm-hmm. absolutely garbage display. But apparently, sell- selling really well. Yeah. Well, and maybe this one will too. Who knows? Yeah, and and that would be just terrible. That that would just make me hate people because then, <laughs> then, you know, by buying these things, that's they're signaling to guys like Nokia that they don't care about display technology, and and that's nonsense because you do care. Like it's not a choice. It's well, I mean, to be fair, to be fair though, you can't it, presumably you can't meet this price point with a better display. Right, but why does it have to be 4.7 inches? This is the thing that kills me. Just yeah, why? Well, it's, get... it's literally like, wh- like, where did those these displays come from? Who was making uh, displays at this pixel density, at this size? Like, what bargain bin did they get this display out of? Th- that's what I'm saying. I'm sure HTC had a whole bunch of leftover Titan displays, and yeah, we're like, right? <laughs> do you guys want to take these away for free? Like, we need They're to save some actually, money. Probably like actually Titans inside. They just like <laughs> yeah, it's just repackaged <laughs> Titans. <laughs> if you take a part of Lumia 625, you'll find an HTC logo in there, just <laughs> hiding out. I wouldn't put it past them. Crazier oh, things wow. have happened. Um. Oh, we didn't mention HTC's reorg, but I guess that's okay. I don't really care that much. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of look at this as like a continuation of HTC thrashing a little bit, you know, which yeah. you hate to see because I still think they're kind of one of the more interesting companies in the business, but um, they, they can't get a photo. We, we still don't have a great idea of how the one's performing globally, right? No, yeah. I don't think so. No, we don't. Um, but, I mean, listen, if there's any justice in the world, the HTC One Mini is going to be a big success because... It's, it's more or less, in terms of specs, the first. You know, aside from physical construction, it's the AC first. And the right. moment I, I, I saw and heard about the AC first, I was like, that's going to be the yeah, kind so of phone I'm after. The first and, downfall was it, it felt a little cheap and it had a pretty crappy camera. Uh, but in terms of like actually just using the phone, I mean, I gave it a high review score because I, like, yeah. I was like totally fine using that phone as a phone. It was like, And the point is, this is the phone that fixes the feeling pretty cheap situation. Right. And I know this because I've had an HC one. I've dropped it a whole bunch of times, and this aluminum, aluminium for IUK viewers uh, construction. That's where it really helps mm-hmm. when you are sloppy like me and you drop the damn thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've already brought up Apple sold a ton of iPhones. Their profit margins are going down. I mean, it it was kind of a whatever quarter, but we have had like these quarterly results. So uh, we put together a neat little post that compares profits and income. This is going to talk about a bunch on the Vergecast, so I don't want to get into it too much. I'm assuming it'll get talked a bunch on the Vergecast. Um, but, uh, like, I don't know. The story kind of seems the same to me. Like, Apple makes a ton more revenue and a ton more profits. Their margins are getting a little bit worse. Um, but, you know, if they get back yeah, to a regular to, beat of You know, to, to, Vlad's point, to Vlad's point, I think the big story with this quarter is... The, the iPhone sales number, yeah. which mm-hmm. is completely insane. Yeah, well, and the iPhone sales number, um, not just in total, but if you go look at the carriers, uh, Verizon in particular, the iPhone just passed, I think it, it was 51% of the smartphones that they sold, um, which is a, kind of a big deal. Like, Verizon is now, like, becoming an iPhone carrier in the same way that AT&T has been an iPhone carrier. Um, and so, like, 
I mean, I think Verizon wants to push these these droids because I think that they'd be more comfortable if they had a broader variety of, of smartphones in their portfolio. Um, but nevertheless, people are just like walking into the store and saying, yeah, give me an iPhone. Yeah, I mean, yeah. listen, I'm just reading a headline and it's like $6.9 billion in profit and $35.3 billion in revenue for the last quarter. Uh, and and the, the big headlines are actually the uh, sales of the iPad have gone down 14% and sales yeah. of uh, the iPod Touch have gone down by a third, I think, relative to last year. So like the iPod Touch, which has been Apple's uh, budget iPhone, essentially, is... In spite of its really good design, like his latest design is really nice. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just not selling anymore. People want phones. And the iPhone just keeps winning at, at that battle. But, but it's like, we, we need some way to contextualize this thing. It's $6.9 billion in profit, not in income, not in total revenue. It's just pure, you know, go and make a bar, fill a bar with cash money, profit. Make it rain. That's Dude, that's what I'm saying. Time. If you made it rain with six point nine billion dollars in like hundred dollar bills, you you could fill multiple swimming pools. It's true, you could. This is how bonkers this whole thing is. It's a juggernaut. To your point, um, I if if they made a an iPod Touch that was a phone, I would rather have that than the iPhone five. And I think you know from the leaks we've seen of this alleged like low cost iPhone that they're working on, it kind of resembles that. Um, albeit with a, a plastic thicker. shell. Yeah, yeah, a bit thicker to accommodate the radios, I'm sure, and, and probably a bigger battery. But um, if they move to a, a different high-cost, low-cost strategy with this next round of iPhones where they do, like, a 5S and then this new, like, custom-designed low-cost phone and instead of just moving the 5 and the 4S to lower price tiers, uh, I, think it's, I think it's actually going to elevate them to a whole new level of ridiculous profit. See, what you're dreaming of is the... I mean, Jeff Hawkins was right, guys. Visor phone. It's the way to do it. My God. Just, like, you can update your device every year, and you just... We need to separate Peter. our devices... Let it go, man. Our wire... I'm, I'm serious, man. From our, our wireless contracts. If I could... If I could just have something like an iPod Touch, and then, like, just a little Wi-Fi hotspot, and I could have my phone number and stuff would call in, and then if, you know, I'm pissed off at Verizon, I'll stop my prepaid, you know hotspot there, and I'll switch it over to something else. They could just make that more reliable than Wi-Fi. Like, well, that that was also like kind of the dream of Maju, if you guys remember. Right? I do. Like, I you know, they, they made they made a little tiny phone that you could use uh, as a handset if you wanted to. But then the idea is that you'd take that tiny phone and plug it into like a bigger phone or like a car or whatever you wanted. Yeah, what I want is that little tiny phone to not be a handset on its own. I just want it to be a thing that I plug into the bottom of my actual phone, and I could plug it into the bottom <laughs> of my Android phone or my iPhone or my Ubuntu phone. Or but whatever. wait, isn't that thing that you're describing called a SIM? A SIM? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, <laughs> uh, except for locking and, um, right. you know, America. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, what you're trying to do, Dieter, Thanks you're a trying, lot, to, Abe Lincoln. You're trying to hack the uh, the the American phone economy by turning the locked device into a slightly lo- larger module than a SIM that yeah. plugs into an actual unit that has user-facing functionality. Very clever of you. Too bad it'll never happen. No, of course not. <laughs> um, well, since I said Ubuntu, I said the words that counts as a transition. You guys want to talk about the Ubuntu Edge phone? Yes. I thought you did. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> well, okay. The first thing to say is that this is uh, this is extremely loyal community of Ubuntu and maybe broader Linux users who aren't all that vocal, but who are just out there. They exist because yeah, every time we've covered the premise, the idea of a Ubuntu phone, people just go nuts about it. You know, just conversation has exploded, uh, the posts have had massive traffic. It, it, there's just this, you know, not obvious interest, and there's this really broad community going on and support for Ubuntu. And what they're doing, Canonical, the guys behind Ubuntu, they've introduced their well, at this point, they're just renders of Ubuntu Edge, which is supposed to be the first Ubuntu phone. They've set themselves a goal of $32 million. They've gone to Indiegogo, and they've given themselves a month 
to make that yep. thirty-two million dollars happen. And the absolutely stupefying thing is that they already have like over three million. They're at three point six million. Uh, there were like what thirty something hours in. Yeah. Um, I mean, they had to make one million per day, and they're already cranking away at it. Yeah. Little so I mean, who, who are these Ubuntu lovers? Like, that's a that's a thirst thing. Well, so that's, that's the thing I'm wondering in. is like, one like, are we gonna uh, is it gonna plateau and not make it? And what happens if it doesn't make it? Well, I'm I'm sure I'm sure it's not gonna keep this kind of pace yeah. perpetually. Like all all the guys who are really passionate about it will be getting in at the earliest possible stage. Um, but you know, all we have so far are renders. Like yeah. they haven't even done a prototype. No. They, they didn't have a corresponding physical event. They just had a press conference slash call-in to announce this thing. Um, so it's just kind of iffy. Four people have claimed the $10,000 one-of-a-kind uh, Ubuntu Edge phone. I'll bet you one of them is like Linus Torvalds. Yeah. Exclusive it's a VIP interview, invite to uh, join Mark Shuttleworth at the unveiling. I I just I, I cannot bring myself to care at all about this device. And will will you guys please just Reader's Digest version? Why should I care about this phone? Well, it it has it has potential as part of Ubuntu's full screen thing of having the one OS, the one set of apps that can work across the whole thing. Uh, what are you talking? TVs, phones, tablets, or whatever the full screen was. Where's where my Where's my Ubuntu TV? It's coming, <laughs> and and that's the whole point with, with Ubuntu is that it's it's a whole load of promise, and you know I played around with the software in January of this year, uh, the Ubuntu phone software, and it has all, all these little s slides and gestures and nice little tricks. It, it kind of reminded me of the Nokia N9 because when good things happen in the phone OS. I'm reminded of the Nokia N9. <laughs> but just like the N9, I, I just don't see the economics of this ever working out yeah, or the you timing. Know where, you know where I see this going? Like, this, the Edge is, like, going to barely make it or it's going to fail. You know what's, what's going to happen? We're going to see a Virtu phone running Ubuntu. That would be pretty cool. Perfect fit. We're going to see a what? A Virtu phone. But this oh. is the thing I was thinking, is the one positive out of this whole thing is that uh, Canonical are giving us an estimate for how much it costs to kick out your own phone. Yeah. So, yes, you need a massive software development team and you need an OS, fine. But after that, it takes essentially $32 million, apparently, and whatever you know other funding, funding they have to, to get the hardware going. So what I'm wondering is, when you have all these Russian oligarchs and billionaires and uh, all sorts of other hard-working, mostly men, who've acquired wealth that they cannot even figure out how to spend, why don't you just throw, like, 50 million at it and just have your own phone? Yeah. Like, I, w I would love to have Vlad OS. If I had, like, millions and millions, <laughs> that's what I would do. But you know? you'd have to wait, like, two years for it to be solid enough. Say you hired an entire engineering team and design team, it would still take them, like, a minimum of two years to, like, produce, like, a quality product, right? Well, no, because I would actually keep it simple. I'm not going to insist on them making 3D, fake 3D app icons and stupid, you know, transitions and crap. I would keep it simple like Johnny High. Oh. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, obviously, if I had all that money, the first thing I'll do is just buy, buy out Johnny High. <laughs> You'll just buy Johnny High. Yeah. yeah. Come on. No problem. It's fine. Yeah, it, I mean, okay, I mean, obviously, like, you know, I want to root for the underdog. I still think it would be okay if BlackBerry could build an app ecosystem and gain some market share back. Uh, same thing, you know, Windows Phone, I'd want them to be better. Um, and Ubuntu is, like, trying something else that's interesting. But, I mean, until we figure out a way to get apps to run on these platforms that people actually want to use... You know, it's tough. And right. uh, web apps have not done super hot on mobile. And there's plenty of examples of uh, why and how that has failed. That I mean, what's going to end up happening with this? I'll cry. 
what's going to end up happening with this is the same thing that's going to happen to Yala and whatever the hell else is out there. Uh, it, it's going to end up become becoming this hobbyist operating system for tinkerers, mm-hmm. and there will be you know there will be like dev friendly phones you can buy at full price to to run this, or you can hack your Android phone to run it or whatever. But it's never going to be a mainstream uh, platform with mainstream adoption and mainstream apps. It's just not. Yeah, I I, I guess it kind of reminds me of um, I think the Nokia N800 and N900. Are those the right devices I'm thinking of? A 950, maybe? Uh, a 950 was the slider. Yeah, was... yeah. I mean, I mean, I remember Nokia did a Mamo device that was a slider with a keyboard. Yeah, it was N800. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and that, that struck me as that that's the exact same kind of thing. Not a mass market, not a vastly popular device, but it had a, a few really, really passionate... Uh, fans and users. And I'll tell you what, into it. the N800 had a great build of uh, Firefox on it. It, it worked really well. And it, I think it was actually the first device to have Skype, the first mobile device to have Skype video calling. Right, which really propelled it to success. Yeah, it, it really did. We should, uh, we should lightning round some stuff here. Uh, Verizon Edge, just as terrible as H, or AT&T uh, next. Don't sign up for it. There's a great quote from an analyst, and I think it's Bloomberg's or maybe Reuters report on Edge, where the analyst just says, like... By the way, is the early upgrade program that Verizon introduced in response to AT&T's next early upgrade program, which was introduced yes. in response to T-Mobile's jump upgrade program. There right. Go. Yeah, the, the analyst literally said, like, you'd have to be out of your mind to sign up for this. And, you know, analysts are, are not usually the kinds of people to use superlatives. But he, he was, like, on, on no uncertain terms. He was just like, do not get this. Um, so, yeah, don't get it. There you go. Uh, Verizon's really, really mad that AT&T called itself the most reliable 4G network. As they should be. <laughs> it, it's like, I, I imagine, like, these two, these two like, uh, you know, like, ultra dapper, like, proper gentlemen in, like, an ivory tower somewhere taking their glove off and, like, Slapping each other across the face with it. That's yeah. what's happening right now. With these I mean, two. TC wrote this story up, and like, uh, you know, I was talking with him about it, and I was like, you know, Verizon's kind of right that they've got a more reliable network, but this like this outrage is hilarious, and I had totally forgotten that like these two companies have literally sued each other over these claims. Yeah. Which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, so, whatever. It's pretty great. Uh, oh, lady round. Uh, this insane... We, actually, we need more than a lightning on this. This insane camera attachment that Sony wants to make. This thing is hilarious. Am I wrong? Did we uh, mention on last week's podcast? Did we talk about this on last week's podcast? No, we, we talked about the 1020 attachment at some point, but not the yeah. not the Sony one. Well, I, I remember ranting about it. I, I find it really exciting. Uh, the, the idea with this is that they have their own sensor uh, and lens units which just attaches to the back of your phone, and there's going to be Wi-Fi and NFC, so presumably there'll be a dedicated app, and you have just amazing, amazing pictures on your phone, which is no longer going to need its own camera. Yeah, but does this mean I can not be a complete um, insane person and buy a uh, RX100 M2? Like, Well, that's the point. That's the point. And, Chris, I'm going to brag on your behalf, because I, don't know I understand who would ever you've just acquired... The- an RX100 M2. That's just a ridiculous purchase. It is the least ridiculous purchase. If you're looking, for, look. If you want if you the, got, if you've got nothing to do after like 6:30 p.m. because you live in Chicago, you might as well spend your money. On... <laughs> Getting trolled so hard right now. No, look. First of all, the 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 camera isn't even out yet. It, like it's literally not out. You can go to any retail establishment in the country and say, uh-huh. "Do you have the RX100 M2?" And they'll be like. No, it's not coming out until, what is it, the 26th or 27th? I think I was accidentally sold an RS100 M2, and uh, uh, come and get me, Sony. Like, what are you going to do about it? YOLO. Uh, did, what, what? <laughs> did it, like, fall off the back of a truck? Or, like, what? I, I Yes, I, I, I stole, I, in, in a daring heist, I stole an RS100 M2. No, it, I, it was sold to me at a suburban Chicago store that shall re- remain nameless. They held it for me. Right. I, I went and picked it up. It's a, it's a, but yeah, it's it's a truly it's a amazing. Chicago Rally Way, yes. It, it is it is a truly truly amazing camera, 
and I recommend that everybody buy it. I just um, have a really difficult time believing that uh, you could build an ecosystem around a phone with like a, a sensor that attaches to it and then different lenses that attach to that that no, would no, I th- be I think as amazing as together. a standalone camera like this. No, um, the idea is that it's just going to be one attachment which has a okay. sensor and a lens together. And then, well, there's two variants of the attachment. So here's the thing. The first one, and this is why I've been talking about the RX100 M2 so much, will apparently have the same sensor inside it uh, with, with okay. a lens attached to it. And then the other one will have a bigger zoom, something like a 10x zoom, making it kind of like the Samsung Galaxy S4 zoom, essentially. So you have two. One is going to be for people who want zoom. The other one is going to be, to be for people like Chris who want really high quality. Um, <clears throat> and and probably both of them are going to be for people who are willing to pay for it. I mean, I don't I don't think these are going to be cheap little trinkets that you can strap onto your phone. I think what worries me, uh, just the kind of jumping off the, the conversation we had last week about the 1020, what worries me about this ridiculousness is that it's actually going to be successful. If <laughs> if this thing actually sells well, it, it is it is definitely a sign of the this, impending yeah. apocalypse. If this thing sells well, then Sony will have a successful product not called PlayStation, and then we'll have to stop bragging on them, and I don't want to live in that kind of world. <laughs> No, it's a weird. I mean, look, props for doing something extremely novel, but I still don't understand. I mean, I, I guess there's something to be said for like being able to take this lens and transport it from device to device to device over the years, because you presumably, right. I mean, everybody upgrades their phone way more often than they so upgrade this thing their camera. Communicates over Wi-Fi with your phone? No. Well, apparently, I have Wi-Fi and NFC. So and and the thing is, with, with NFC, you need the things to be close together, and if you're strapping it to the back of your phone, that actually fits perfectly well. Right, but NFC, NFC is used is usually used just to jumpstart a connection over either Bluetooth right. or Wi-Fi, right? Right, so. right. right. No, I mean, I've got, a, I've got a, a Next 6 camera from Sony, and I dearly love it, but if uh, like the Wi-Fi feature on it is completely pointless, so if, if anything yeah. about this smells at all like that, then... It's good night for me. Well, so that's one thing that's really terrible about the RX100 Mark II is that uh, the, I apparently permanently have an NFC logo on the display, just reminding me that NFC, NFC is turned on, and I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. I, I certainly don't own any devices that I can touch to this camera, and I, I don't want it on, but I, I've gone through every menu item with a fine-tooth comb, can't figure out how to turn it off. Wow. That's terrible and horrible. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um... But before before we wrap things up though, yeah, let me, so let me mention this. Yeah, the iWatch. Anyway, continue. I, I just want to say, if this uh, Sony attachment pans out, and if Sony does the smart thing, which is to make it somehow compatible with any device, uh, or let's say any Android device with NFC, that's fine. Just don't don't limit it to your own brand. Don't limit it to Sony. It's going to be really exciting for somebody who gets uh, a cheaper device, something like the One Mini that I keep fawning about today, uh, with a crappy camera, right? So if you buy the One Mini today and it's nice and cheap, and then this Sony attachment comes out, it's perfect. It's perfect for you because it's like, okay, I have this phone, as big as limitation as the camera, and then all of a sudden I can strap a, uh, you know, a really high quality Sony sensor on it, and you know, just go to town. That would be great. Yeah. I'm splendid. Uh, and the final thing to say about the Sony thing is that it's expected for IFA, which is the first week of September in Berlin, and I should be there, rubbing it all over my face. Chowing down on some extremely low-carb uh, uh, Bavarian pretzels. So, uh, Dude, last thing, no carb Apple in Germany is possible. It's, it's possible. Apple has a secret team working on the iWatch. It's uh, Bob Mansfield, Adobe executive Kevin Lynch, uh, man who can't act his way out of a paper bag, Paul Walker. I believe Vin Diesel's on the team. <laughs> and, Wait, uh, what? It's there's a secret team at Apple, working. Uh, Apple's FF seven team. Yeah. I mean, if Apple hired uh, the heist crew from the Fast and Furious series to to work on anything, it would just be a roaring success, and they would be unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> anything, like any problem Apple has, just hire Paul Walker and Vin Diesel. Yeah. Problem solved. There you go. And The Rock. Well, well yeah, I guess so. <laughs> okay. That, ladies and gentlemen, is The Verge Mobile Show. I want to thank you so much for watching. 
and listening or just one of those two. Although if you're kind of the person that watches but doesn't listen, um, <laughs> don't really know how to... You just like our faces, and I respect yeah, that. I Okay. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, and you should... I am Backlon. Chris is Z Power. Vlad is Vlad Savop. Dan, who's not here, is DC Seeper with an EI. We are all at Verge. You can and you should leave a comment on this post. It's up right now on the Verge. You can go do it. Just go right, right here, right now. And um, until next week, probably. Thanks. <laughs>